Thank you, John. As John said, I work for Port Blakely, a family owned forest products company. And I've worked as a wildlife biologist in the industry for 16 years. So conducting this as part of my work there has been a lot of fun and practical for both school and work reasons. So over time, the managed forest landscape has shifted from naturally diverse second growth forest to planted Douglas fir dominated third growth forest. And as a result, the diversity of plants and habitat features in managed forests has declined in some areas and shifted spatially in other areas. This change has occurred primarily to meet the growing demand for high quality building materials, but the simplification of the forest has led to concerns about the impacts of management on forest resilience and biological diversity. So these are the topics I'm going to cover during the presentation today. And I want to let you know that I've worked with a small team to implement the various aspects of this study from the data collection to the analysis. Forests are high functioning and ecologically productive in both natural and managed settings. What you see here is a managed forest landscape. There's a clear cut on the right side of the screen and the green forests that you see are planted Douglas firs primarily and the tan patches that you see are hardwood patches that have grown in naturally. This picture was taken during the winter after the leaves had fallen off the hardwood trees and so that's why they look the color that they look. The Douglas Fir trees are planted densely, and as they grow, they stretch out, limiting sunlight access to the forest floor. But they don't grow well in all places, like areas where the soil is wet or where certain funguses are really abundant. And so these areas are often dominated by other plant species, often hardwood species. And where the hardwood species occur, sunlight is able to infiltrate through the canopy, providing energy to the forest floor and allowing for photosynthesis. Many plant species are adapted to thrive in that understory. For this study, these were the two questions that I wanted to explore. This photo is a closer up view of a conifer dominated photo forest that has some hardwood patches growing within it. And you can imagine that sunlight can penetrate through the hardwood canopy easier than it can through the conifer canopy. Much research has been conducted that describes the importance of both of these habitat types, including the study of gap dynamics, which looks at the function of habitat patches that are surrounded by a matrix of a different habitat type. This work builds on that by looking specifically at the function of small hardwood patches that exist within the conifer matrix and managed forests. For the focal species, I chose to evaluate ground beetles, amphibians, and birds because they are recognized as reasonable indicators of environmental conditions. Also, they each utilize different resources in the forest from the forest floor to the canopy. Assessing them in combination with each other increased the, st the strength of this study. The study took place in the lowlands of southwest Washington. There were five sites. Each site was composed of a conifer and a hardwood plot. Elevations, weather patterns, and species distributions were similar between all sites. The study was focused on forest stands that characterized healthy production forests, where at least one hardwood patch existed. It was a paired plot design where plots were about 100 meters apart and were 20 meters by 20 meters in size. All of the hardwood patches fit within the boundary of the 20 meter by 20 meter plot. And since the hardwood patch was the focus, it was identified first and then the conifer plot was determined randomly. To control for additional variables, I did not want either of the habitats to be associated with water features like wetlands or to be immediately adjacent to any changes in forest type. I also did not want sites that had been disturbed by management within the last 10 years. These are photos from some of the plots. A conifer plot is on the left and a hardwood plot is on the right. You can see the difference in the level of light and the composition of the vegetation community. The center photo shows some of the gaps with a conifer dominated uh, canopy view on the top and a hardwood dominated canopy view on the bottom. Within each 20 meter by 20 meter plot, there were three monitoring designs implemented to collect the various forest structure and composition attributes. The green area on this slide equals the areas that were surveyed for each of the habitat elements. This slide summarizes my methods by taxa. 
Beetles were surveyed via the use of pitfall traps as seen on the left. A pitfall trap is a cup that is buried deep enough in the ground that a wandering beetle can fall into it. 30 of these total were established across all sites and were deployed for a com combined total of 1,158 nights. In the middle, amphibians. Amphibians were searched for across 100% of the plot area and were surveyed three times each by a crew of two. All cover objects were searched under without causing undue disturbance to the habitat. On the far right, we have birds. Birds were surveyed for three times each with the surveyor, surveyor Dakota, tallying all birds heard or seen during 30 minute surveys. Here are the results of the taxa surveys in table format. The next several slides are going to show the same information graphically, so you don't have to memorize what this table shows. Only some of the results are being shared today because of the amount of time for this presentation. But a note about these numbers. Amphibian and bird detections were not independent as the same individuals may have been detected during subsequent surveys. A fourth taxa was observed during surveys. We detected Western garter snake at two of the sites and it was kept in for the analysis. So going forward, you will see the amphibian taxa as called repetifauna to include both amphibians and reptiles. A total of 388 individuals were detected encompassing 45 species. Of the animal species, 33 were associated with conifer plots and 41 were associated with hardwood plots. Before going into the results on this slide, I want to explain a little bit about how I did the analysis. I generated box plots to compare the distribution of data at each forest habitat type, and that's what you see here. Within the box plots, 50% of the data falls within the gray box, and each whisker up and down from the box represents 25% more of the data. Outliers are indicated by a small open circle, and the dark line in the gray box is the median value, that is half of the values fall above that point and half fall below it. I ran t-tests to compare the means between the two habitat types. In a t-test, all the data is boiled down to a t-statistic. You can see the t-statistic identified in the upper right of the box plot. A t-value close to zero indicates that the observed difference between the samples is within the range of normal, while a larger t-value indicates that the difference between the samples is more extreme than the variability in the data itself, indicating more significance, like on this plot. The p-value is next to the t-value on the box plot. For this study, to pick up potential patterns in the small data set, a p-value of less than 0.1 was considered for the significance threshold. So now to talk about the results shown here. Plant richness is the number of plant species that were growing at a site and included forb, shrub, and tree species. Significantly more plant species were growing in hardwood-dominated plots than conifer-dominated plots. This result was expected and has been widely described in the literature. It is the direct result of increased sunlight infiltration of the forest floor. For ground beetles, 78 individuals representing 10 species were detected in pitfall traps. On the left, the average number of ground beetle species at each habitat type was similar, with more variation occurring at conifer sites. On the right, Relative abundance is an index of the actual abundance to account for the varying trapping effort that occurred between sites. The relative abundance between sites was similar for ground beetles with more variation occurring at conifer sites. Those are some of the species that were detected across the bottom of the page. This graph shows the distribution of the individual ground beetle species and shows which species were detected at which plots. The 10 species that were detected are identified in the left-hand column. Each of the dark green colors represents a conifer site, and each of the light green colors represents the associated hardwood site. One conifer site did not have any beetle detections. This type of graphic helps us identify which species are common and able to persist in more types of habitats versus species that may, may be more specialized to specific habitats. Seven beetle species were detected broadly across both habitat types, while one was det detected once only in each habitat type, and two other species were unique to one habitat type or the other. More replicates would be helpful to increase the confidence of these conclusions, especially for the unique species. 
For Erpetofauna, 102 amphibians and three reptiles representing eight species were detected during surveys. For species rich richness on the left, significantly more species were detected at hardwood sites than at conifer sites. On the right, abundance of herpetofauna was indexed to account for the differences in survey durations, and the relative abundance was similar between sites. Again, there's our cast of characters on the bottom, some of them. This is the distribution of amphibians in the reptile across all sites. Again, the eight species are identified on the left. Three species were common across all sites, while five were unique to hardwood sites only. For birds, 205 birds representing 25 species were detected during surveys. The average number of bird species and the abundance of birds detected at each habitat type was similar, with more variation occurring at hardwood sites. Here, the 25 bird species identified on the left, about half of them were fairly common across all sites, with another 25% common enough to be detected at both sites. Seven bird species were unique to one habitat or the other, with three unique to conifer sites and four unique to hardwood sites. In conclusion, both habitat types functioned biologically for all taxa. Some species were unique to either conifer or hardwood dominated habitats. A lot of research has evaluated the biological importance of gap habitats. This research looked specifically at small gaps in managed forests because they are what we typically see. The results of this study indicate that maintaining small upland hardwood patches across the managed landscape has conservation value for some species. More mm -hmm. replicates would be useful. Oops, I just unplugged my light. Good. More replicates would be useful to increase the signal potential for these and other associations. Many people made this work possible. I thank Port Blakely for their sponsorship and the individuals there that supported me. I thank Dr. John Withy for his advice and expertise through this process, Dakota Vogel for his help with amphibian and bird surveys, and many other individuals who contributed to the quality of this work. This slide does not list them all. With that, I will open it up to questions. <laughs>